all the riches and the great blessings of God, the Berechaya, that is the riches of his strength, his wealth, his prestige resting upon the people that he has elected. He has called and set them apart for the service of his bayat, his house. And that is the responsibility of Yisraya, that he has set us apart. He has established us to service his bayat, not to serve the temple of this flesh, but that in all that we do, we would please him in all of our effort. As we are led by the discipline of the Torah, we must be disciplined by the Torah. It is one of the most vital essentials to life. There is nothing else that gives life or produce or promotes the high. And that is the breath that calls life to live within the body of any substance, whether it is plant, animal life, or human life. That we have the high or the life of Almighty Yah, and that is vitally important unto us, Yisraya, because your sure Hamashiach lives, and we can face tomorrow the circumstances that challenge his integrity and everything in life that we are opposed by, it is to challenge the integrity of Almighty Yah. That's why we must become rooted and settled in the Torah of Almighty Yah, that we be a people that is not so shakable and that we are unmovable in the principles of Almighty Yah. That is vitally important for our growth, our stability, and the strength of his nurturing uh, be made known uh, as men look upon us and see the light, the greats, or the greats, the God oil, or the great light, or the witness of Yahshua HaMashiach. And that is vitally important for the hour that we're in. We're living in a time that the mayhem of darkness, we see the demonic powers of hell how that they are raging by the commands of Yah, we see the unity of one of the most vilest religious spirit of halatry, that they're all meeting on the one auspice, every religion, religion of the world, under the auspice of the mandate of the gods. Not Yah, but the God. Whether you are a Buddhist of Islam, Judaism, Christianity, Fuchism, you can meet under the umbrella of the gods because they are all in tune and they are all worshipping the god of this world, Hashatan. They are the zero of the seed of darkness. I want to make a simple truth known to us today. This nation is in the thralls of mayhem and destruction. It is the hand of Yah. You have nearly a third of the people that depend upon government assistance of food stamps and the government program of assisting them in eating. It defies the dietary law of Yah. And they're literally killing them. They're feeding them some of the most vilest of junk with every kind of unclean animal part incorporated in that. Just like it was in the days of Noach, so shall it be in the days of the coming of Yeshua Hamashiach. It is a nation that is $15 trillion in debt. They have brought your sons and your daughters uh, into the bondage of slavery. They're robbing their minds with their internet experience. They're robbing them of any kind of essence of emotions and feelings for Yah. And the parents are culprit to that. It is a nation that is $15 trillion in debt. 
It promotes some of the most vilest crop lifestyles. And it is not a lifestyle that cannot even be imagined among the kingdom world of the beasts. They're vile homosexuality, the vileness of uh, the activities of this wicked greed of this world of, the love of money that promotes every kind of vile, insidious, uh, wicked action that one can draw from, from the kingdoms of hell. This is a nation and the nations uh, of her legion. They're drawing from hell, Yisra'ya. What a nation like Libya and a nation like Misraim. When it would cost someone four dollars to go from the airport to the central metropolitan or complex of those states. Now it costs six hundred dollars to ride a taxi. We say, wow, and that amazes us. And yet we are working for pennies as far as the labor of our physical labor. Why is it that so? Because the damn greedy dogs and the vultures of America, Britain, and France, and Italy, and Israel, their adversaries, they have gone into a nation that is crippled and brought low to amass riches and to cripple them even the more with a system that they call democracy and capitalism, which has come from the bosom of this vile whore that Yorka Haran saw in Gilyana, Revelation chapter 17, that Yah says that I'm going to bring the vilest judgment upon this wicked, insidious religious whore we got to get that damn religious mess out of us we must come clean with you we must get the damnable religious tenants out of our bosom where the average layman cannot even catch a taxi and yet we see the wall street bankers we see those from the powerful, as they call them, merchant houses of darkness, raiding upon a nation and nations like vultures to ravish their oars, to steal their petrol, and to steal every kind of ornaments, artifact that they have, to give strength unto their most damnable wicked lifestyles. And they bring the people under the maze of that delusion as we are in this damn united demonic power of Hashatan. Because we all unite under the same umbrella of greed and lust and wicked practices. Against Yah, that brings damnation upon our nephesh. We practice things that are so vile and so insidious. And the works are so corrupt that our conscience is not even aware. That we have become the practitioners of some of the most vilest activities. That even our minds cannot conjure up this. This is coming from the powers that be, that Yah has opened the windows of the heavens. He's going to pour down his wrath upon the nations of the earth. I want to teach and to preach something today. I did want you all to sing my song, You're More Than a Conqueror, but I'm going to press on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It has been reported that the seventh billion birth upon the earth. And of course the world, were, the world was mesmerized by that. This is according to the corrupt statistics of the nations that corrupt every nation. That steal, that robs the people of a culture, of a simplicity of lifestyle. 
They go in and rape their daughters and their sons and turn them into faggots. And their daughters into belligerent whores that dress like, even unlike the beasts of the field. Whereby there is no sensitivity, no caring, no concern. They simply do not give a damn. And the men are turned into raving beasts. As I read an article that how that they took Mr. Gaddafi and they sodomized him. And the nation or that continent of Africa, Africa, which by implies that uh, it will never freeze or no freezing. The warm, the chemet, the land of the dark mass of the dirt that is richly black. And yet because of the institutions of the British nation, France and Russia, Portugal and the United States of demonic power and control, um, they literally sodomized the man, took brooms and sticks, and ran up in this man's anus, what kind of a sadistic, damnable, wicked mind. That this nation promotes only three things. It promotes its damnable, twistedness of faggotism, of homosexuality, I call it faggotism. And I won't take back one damn word. They're faggot dogs. The damn faggotism. Uh, you will go to every nation, whether you go to Yisrael and see the filth of these damnable dogs. And the capitalist damnable greed to uh, bring everyone into subjection of slavery, Shibuth, that they control their minds by their interwinding of their net of control, by their tell the vision that seduce. And they go into the nations of this democracy of a religious fervor that you're free. Become free thinkers. There is no free thinkers. How do you base the word freedom upon uh, attributes and a consciousness that we possess that you have been the creator of that? We are damn foolish and silly people. We need the messengers, the nobi of Yah that he raises up. A certain kind of certain characteristics of a certain tenor and a certain tenacity to stand before Yisra'ya because it is time to build his bayat. He has given man these last seven days and we're at the cusp of the eighth day, the new beginning of Almighty Yah. He tells the nations of the earth according to his numeric calculation that the seventh billion person has been born. He tells us even as the Melech of Yakahan in Giliana, as he began to open the seven last seals to show us the finished work of man, how it is culminated, what shall be the end. And there is only one power that gives us strength to become more than a conqueror in this hour. And you will never climax to that point until we are nurtured. And one thing, and this will only give us the power to become more than a conqueror. And Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeah. And I'm not talking about what this damnable, wicked religious system calls more. I'm glad that they use that adjective there more than more to imply that your ability is superior. It is greater. It is much more superb to overcome in the midst of great battles. 
When one is more, give me a little more, give me more. It is to imply that there is a need that is much more superior than what you presently discern by your physical perception. He has granted unto a nation of people because we are going to need that Israel for the barrel, the milkana, the barrel is set in array. And if we do not put on the garments of Yah, and woe unto us, I'm going to take my time, whether you receive it or not. I frankly do not give a damn. No, I am not. Ma'am, sir, am I going to stop saying I don't give a damn? Because this is a damned generation. It's a generation of people and we have become a part of it. We practice every kind of twisted delusion that is so vile even if the messenger stood up, we would not know them, son, as we talk that day laboring in the hayfield. We cannot even discern what is of Yah. And the reason we cannot because we don't have the da'ats, the knowledge. We don't give a damn when it comes to Yah. We got time for every kind of wicked conjuring, a vile thought, a deceit, and wickedness. When it comes to Yah, we just do not give a damn. Because we don't have time for him. No time for Walmart, Kmart, and the Dollar Mart. We don't have time for Almighty Young. We have time to lie, to cheat, to steal, to corrupt ourselves. But we don't have time for Almighty Yah. I am not taking back one word. I am not speaking to this wicked world. I am speaking to the people of Yah. I'm not here to repudiate the actions of the world. I'm showing us what is among us. I will express this in the teaching today and to show us the only way. We are going to overcome this. It's not by your grandmother's prayers. It's not by your mother's prayers. And because our prayers are not even fervent in the ruach of Almighty Yah, it is certainly not going to be by your prayers either. He has given us the span of time to complete the building of the Bayat, his house. Our house is, this heart is in shabbos. We live wickedly. We store some of the most vilest things. That's why we must constantly, as the rich ruler, as Zachin Benjamin brought out on Khadfi Imat, the rich man says, look at my fields, they produce abundantly. My barn is too small, so I must tear down this barn and build barns that are larger so that I may store all of my riches and the wisdom of Yah speaking from Hashemayim. Yah says, you are a fool. For this is the day of Yah, this day your nefesh is required of you. So what shall a man give? In exchange for the breath, Yeshua Hamashiach, the life of Torah dwelling in him. So we are we're tearing down the simple things of Yah. We're dismantling the simple knowledge of Torah. And we're building our minds upon the corruption of our flesh. And we're denouncing Yah. The little that a Sadiq man has is greater than all the wealth of the wicked. And so the little bond is sufficient, yeah. This little light, I know we have learned it that way. But it's more than a mi'at. This great light of your shoe. Let's change the word. We're going to let that shine. Hallelujah. We let the great light of Torah shine from us. We're building a house not on the sure foundation. And that's why we're so easily corrupt. And we corrupt ourselves. No one is corrupting you. You serpents of hell, no one has corrupted you. 
You've corrupted yourself. I must prove that in Torah. The heart of man is deceitful above all things. And is desperately wicked. That's why Shaul says unto the gathering of the elect. There as he wrote unto Felicia. He said. My Ach, admonish you to let the same Laba, the mind, the heart that was in Yahshua Hamashiach, let that heart dwell in Yisrael to imply that Yahshua did all he did to please Almighty Yah. And we are a self, selfish, flesh, bazaar, indulgent. People, we frankly do not give a damn about Yah. For our desires are sensual, fleshly. We know that the carnal mind, that sensual application, it is not subject unto the Torah of Yah. To be carnally minded uh, is death. To be spiritually minded or the mind of the Ruach, it is life, it is Hayel, and it is Shalom. Why? For we know that the carnal mind is not subject unto the Torah of Yah, neither indeed can it be. It can never yield to Torah. And so we're seeking out all kinds of applications. To bring about some kind of uh, appeasing. And we are miserable as hell. And it ought not to be. Come out of this dirty whore. Come out of America. I want to teach you a little today. And I will tell you at the conclusion. What I'm trying to drive home to Yisraya. Hallelujah. Great is his chassid, the Noham of Yah, the mercies of Yah. I want to read a verse as I began. Just listen. Yochahan said, and there came unto him, he said, there were one of the seven melachim, the messengers of Yah. A melach is one that bears the message, the bazurach, the tenets of Yah, as he has gone before the throne of Yah, his kese, he has reaped that from the living water of well that flows, the pure, pristine stream that flows before Yah's throne to come to refresh Yisrael. Whether it is judgment, whether it is destruction, whether it is denouncing, what is to reveal their sins, it is to bring refreshing uh, to the fact that we know that the mercies of Yah are renewed unto us as a nation of people continuously. So he saw this milach. He had the last of the seven vials, uh, the seven most destructive things that shall be upon the nation of nations. It shall befall Yisraya, we are the nation. And Yah has scattered us abroad. That we will be an enrichment to all nations of the earth. And because we have gone away from the Torah of Yah, we are not even a blessing to one another. We don't give a damn about each other. And if you don't give a damn about each other, you can't give a damn about the world. And so this religious harlot has taught us, love everybody. You must love Yisraya first. Because that is Yah's elect before you can love anyone. And that's a fact. We have opportunity to do tough unto all men. But preference, especially Yisraya. As much as we have opportunity, let us do tough unto Kul. All men, especially those that are the house of Yisrael, and we don't give a damn 
We treat them like a pile of maggot-induced dung. We don't give a damn. We don't want to be around them, but you love to live with faggots and dogs. You love to live in the neighborhoods with racist pigs and every kind of damnable twisted delusion. You love that. But you don't love your people, but yet you use that word. You love them. I shall move on. He saw this Melak and he said, and the Melak began to talk with me. He said unto me, I want you to come up, come out of your natural nature. He said, come hither, move up into a ram that you have never moved up in. It is amazing that, listen, Yisraya, I have been an ignorant man all my life, and I'm still ignorant. And yet you that have listened to me over the many years, uh, we should have come hither. We should have come up. We should be strong in the Torah of Yah. We should have a beauty that shines that nations will look on. And they should be inspired. But our light is dull. That's why it is a me, oh, it's a little light. It is not the Rab. The mighty great light of Yah with much illumination. We should have moved up into another tier. Above all spiritually. And then when we move up into that tier spiritually, you will see that in the operation of our activities, uh, of our physical being. We are drunken people, full of sin and wickedness. You think that your sins, the milach, first they continue in the path? When he sent the milach unto Balaam, did he did not alter his path? Did not he cause the dumb ass to speak? But he takes a dumb ass like me and others, and he calls us to speak. And the path, the derach that we are headed to, is going to bring destruction. And we see that even in our lives as we sit here today and as we listen to this message of Imat. It shall be truth. No compromising. Don't need no external literature. Just the heart of Yahshua HaMashiach. Don't need no reference books. Just to reference Torah, line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, precept, here a little and there a little. That's all I need. He said, I want you to come up here. The only way you can understand the dynamics of this, you must move out of the element of your fleshly nature and you must detach yourself from all things. We can see that uh, in the epic dialogue as he was uh, placed there on the Isle of Patton. And the barons uh, of that island, he was placed there to hear the revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach. That is what this is. It is the real revelation of Yahshua. We beheld the power of the mercy and the tenderness of Torah. And now we're going to see the revelation of Torah. Because the Torah always judged and brought the appropriate mandate of Yah before the people. And there was no sparing at all. And if we think that Yah is going to spare us, we are in much delusion. And he showed me the judgment of the great whore that sits on many waters. I want to start there. He showed me the judgment or the mishpat the mishpat of Yah is the judgment or the actions the counsel of Yah taken according uh, to his Torah it is the lawful and the righteous way uh, to administer the righteous judgment of Almighty Yah he showed me the judgment he called her a great whore she was a great harlot. She was just not your nickel dime whore. But her tentacles reach unto the waters of the masses of the people. 
I know that there are those that will say this is Catholicism. Uh, and they will leave all of the other religious uh, identities. Uh, they are left stay free. But this is, this impugnates Holy Spirit. That they all meet under this one mandate of the God. To love everyone. The God. And they don't give a damn. It is a delusion. The God of the Islam is the same damn God of Christianity. The God of Islam is the same damn God of Judaism. The God of Judaism is the same damn God of Buddhism. They're no different. They're vile, unscrupulous things. And their power is administered by the one of darkness that did not abide, did not dwell in Imat, in truth. That's their God. It is her short tongue. She is a whore. And within the body of the whore is every kind of disease. She carries every kind of unclean thing. That's why we can judge ourselves that we need no man to judge us. And we will see the unclean things that are in us that are causing the diseases among Israel. When they go into your heart because... Uh, the issues of the heart, the issues of the heart of man, they proceed out of his lotion, out of his faith. And so they gather in your congregation, you began to speak. And your diseases cover and kill and destroy. For you don't give a damn about Yah. You convince them by the power of your tongue. That they don't give a damn. And they take the same disease. And everyone they touch. They are corrupted by the same kind of vile, damn, twisted disease. And once you go into the whore, the whore is a deep ditch. And he that goes into this whore, you just do not come out of her, Yisra'ya. We must be more than a conqueror. I'm going to read that. And I'm going to show us how we get to that place. We must be more. Not just a conqueror. But we must be more than a conqueror. I want to read from Giliana. Just listen. That's all right. You're not going to revisit it again anyway. So Shemach. If nothing else, Shemach. Here with the perfect mind to obey. I have learned all I have learned by listening to the precepts of those that teach. The concepts of Almighty Yah. Then I will take the precepts and the concepts as I delve into Torah. They become alive unto my bosom. And because we don't have the ability to shemak, we don't hear, we don't grow. There's the beauty of the excellence of the abundance of the peri, the fruit of Yah. We ought to see ourselves exponentially, continuously, a growth pattern that you cannot even comprehend. I see it in me every day. And I see the shallowness the day before. And the hour that's passed. Something is wrong. We don't comprehend. We have no foresight. We have no ability uh, to even hear beyond uh, even the words as Joshua spoke in parables. He says it's not meant for the world to know. It's meant for you. We don't have the wisdom to understand that. That's why we're dismal. And we incite spiritual Physical, mental health. We need to know him as Yarafa, our healer. The one that restores us unto the beauty of Torah. We need that. Our prayer raise up the Nobi, Yah. Yokohan says, as the Melach, the messenger, as he spoke unto him, he says, This Tanim, or this tremendous beast, the dragon. 
And the dragon was uh, rough, or he was khama. His anger was beyond inexpressive terminology to express his dissent, his vile nature to seek out, to search out for one thing, for the remnant of the zira, the seed of the woman. What seed dwells in our bosom? As we hear our Zakhin Yarabaya constantly reminds us, uh, what is the zira? Has it been mixed? The Torah tells us you do not mix the seeds when you plant in the garden or, or trying to graft and to produce something out of two or three kinds of seeds. And so we're taking the seed of all of our corruption and trying to graft a righteous way according to our perceptions and our likes and dislikes. And it's causing diseases and death among Israel. And you're corrupting everything that you touch. You are corrupt. Our minds are vile and sadistic. We find ourselves married to the powers of hell. And they come down and they sup with us. And they dine in our minds. We're not dining in the throne room of your. We're eating off the tables of vomit and puke and unclean things. You has prepared a table before us in the midst of our oyeb, our enemies. There's a milchaya, whether you want to buy it or not. And there's a battle that you're not just going to overcome. You must be more than a conqueror. More. There must be more than an excellent desire and a passion in you. And our desire is just not excellent. Our compassion for Yah Yisraya is not excellent. Because this is how all men will know you, my disciples. My discipline was that the love you have one toward another. And you don't give a damn. You don't even want to abide with Yisraya. This is a people I will, my young friend. If any man loves the world and the things of the world... It is because the love of the Abba is not in him. When there are those that would love to go to their job and they get more appeasing on their job than they do in their home or in the fellowship of Yisraelia, something is twisted in your damn twisted mind. When the world gives you this Giddish emotion and yet the fellowship of Yisraelia never... Satisfy you, you're twisted. You're a damn sick creature. And when your conversation is more about some faggot dogs or the freaks of the world than about Torah, you're sick. I don't back down for no man when it comes to this. Not even me. Hallelujah. He said, this dragon, this tannin, this beast out of the darkness of darkness of hell, he was wroth, he was hara. He tells us with the elect, she is the bahir. She is the chosen, the choice one. She is the crown of Yah's beauty. That's what Yisraya is. She is the crown, not the nations, but that nation. He was wroth with only, he was not wroth with America. He was not wroth with Russia or Portugal. He was wroth with the elect or the elect issue, the woman that had done something that was so egregious unto him. That had gone against the very flow of his vile nature. She had gone, he was, had wroth against her and he went to make war. To make Milchaya, to engage in battle, spiritual battle, to engage in a natural color battle, to make war with the remnant, the Bahir, the remnant of her zira, the fragment, the residue, the elect, the chosen, the choice ones that have come out of the elect woman. He went. To make war, 
to make battle. To open the doors to every kind of vile, wicked activity that one could imagine. To draw, to allure, to cause them to become so sensitive uh, to the ways of the world that they lose all spirit, spiritual uh, sensitivity to the Torah of Yah. That he begins to promote everything that is so vile uh, that they are engulfed uh, in the swall of activities. Uh, they don't know what to elect. They don't know which way to go. They don't know which way to turn. They don't know how to turn back to Yerushalayim. Uh, they don't know how to fall on their knees and cry out that they are regarded in Siona to Zagorna. They don't have the nature to do that. So he went to make war with the remnant. The small fraction, the residue, the remnant of her zira, that which has been birthed from her. And the remnant of true Yisraya. He gives us a characteristic of this people. He says, who shall I, who keeps, who guards, who honors, who reverence, who keep it in their bosom, who keeps the mitzvah, they guard the mitzvah of Yah, and they have the aid or the testimony of Yahshua Hamashiach. We all think we have that. But there is only one way that's going to be developed. And we must understand the process. We must understand what must be revealed unto us. What must be shown of our nature, our attitude. We must be. This is who the battle. And the battle that is set in array. It is against the elect woman. The one that Yah chose. The one that he has elected. The one that he has set his seal of approval and the seal of his dynamics upon. Because that woman, Yisraya, out of that bosom of Yaakov, Yisraya, the power to prevail, to overcome, to resist the powers of hell, and to bring in the subjection, every thought, every imagination, unto the mandate of the Torah of Yah. And we are fragile and we are weak. You go in the midst of a crowd, you begin to disperse. It's easily to overtake. You can start arresting and the others become fearful. There's nothing like a fortified front. And once we develop that fortified front, then we will, as Shaul says here, I will tell you this one. In Romeo, the book of Romans. The book of Romans chapter 835. This is a prototype of Yisraya's final triumphing over the powers of hell, over the very insidious workings of our own deceived conscience and mind, and over the great onslaught of the demonic powers that shall rise up and come against the zira of Yisraya. They're not looking for those that uh, practice Judaism. They're not looking for those that practice their Baha'i faith. The power, the, the assault will not be against Christianity. Uh, that's why the whore tells those parishioners uh, that you're going to be caught up during the czar or the tribulation, the czar. The czar of your, it is a straight, tight, narrow Corridor of oppression, affliction, denial, restraint. And Yah has given us the seven days, and yet we have not, uh, we have not abandoned the alluring, the drawing, and the pull of our flesh. And so He's going to bring us to a point. Who, the elect of the woman, the remnant of Yisraya, that we must, with all victorious power. We're going to show that we are more than a conqueror. Yeah. We must be more than a conqueror. Yeah. A conqueror is not just going to do it. Your sword must be precise. It must be on target. It cannot miss. It cannot. Yeah. 
And these that call themselves conquerors today, they're not conquering. And will show us what we must conquer. And the only way we're going to conquer that, so you're going to have to bear with me today. I'm going to take uh, Zakei Nechalia's mythology today uh, and read a little, but it will inspire. I will explain as I go. I have six pages, and I'm going to read them all. Hallelujah. You don't get bored in Walmart and Kmart and the Dollar Mart. So damn you. I don't care whether you're sitting here or you're listening. I don't give a damn. Hallelujah. Shaul writing unto the scattered remnant of Yisrael. He speaks of our final triumphing through the power and revelation of Yeshua HaMashiach. Because that is what Yohanan said. He shall have a great assault upon those the elect, the zero of the elect woman, uh, those that first of all they must shema, they must keep the mitzvah, the commandments of Yah. They must keep the laws of Yah, all 613 of them. They must keep all the laws. Uh, and the only way you can keep every law according uh, to the ordinance of Yah, there must be an aid, a living testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. You can try practicing keeping the Shabbat. You cannot do it. It's only through a living testimony. And the testimony must be real. It must be the substance of your life, not what you've learned through the whore. These little projection of words, they give you some kind of self-indulging, of arousing that make you feel good. No. But it must be the id. It must be the aid, the testimony of power, of life, of the witness of your dwelling in your bosom. You must. And you cannot shema the mitzvah without your sure or that testimony of your sure Hamashiach. And that is a fact. That's why we fell, we're falling, we're seduced, we're drawn. Under our own delusion, Yisra'ya. And that's why we lie and we cheat and we sin. And we do things that are diabolically uh, opposing the mandates of Almighty Yah. It is a diabolical scheme of our own crop damn flesh. We must impel this damn stuff daily, all the day long. Yeah. It cannot rise up. Yeah. If you're wrong, say you're wrong. If you have done an isha and akron, say you're wrong. You go to them with such a damn cowardly, weak people. It takes the strength of the living testimony of your sure to do that. Oh, I'm going to ride upon your doorsteps. I'm not here to step on your feet. I'm here to show you the wretchedness of our own damn wicked heart. No, I'm not here to tell you to look at your neighbor, but you. Not you. You. I will show us, my friend. See, this is a generation that's not even a conqueror. A conqueror is one that has the ability, he has strength, he has might. He has power, he prevails, he overcomes, he overtakes, he subdues, he, he, he charges ahead. Are we charging ahead in the Torah? Are we overcoming the blight of our own corruption? That answers the question. Shaul says in Romeo 8.35, he says, I want to tell you who shall or what shall badal. What's going to separate or cause a severing divide between Yah and me. Romans 8.35. What shall separate us, the elect, the more here of Yah, from the Ahava of Yeshua HaMashiach? What's going to separate? What will Israel Badal cause a severing and a separation between us? And Yahshua, for Yah so loved Yisra'ya, he loved his Olam, his creation, that he sent Yahshua HaMashiach. What has separated you from the love of Yahshua? 
What has caused your heart not to cry with the sweetness of his name? Uh, you enter into his bay and there is no praises unto Yah for the mighty power of Yahshua. Do we do that? We get quiet, don't we? Because it shows us there is not a damn thing in us but our own folly, our lies, and our own damn corruption. And we don't even know how to overcome. I'll show you in the end. He shall sell, shall czar or tribulation, shall my enemy, my foes, shall the great trials. We don't know what tribulations are. We don't know the afflictions of the czar of a straight, narrow place whereby our enemy have the right to oppress us. We're in a land, we're in a nation. Yisra'ya is scattered abroad and they are oppressed, they are suppressed, they are robbed. They are mutilated. They are destroyed because of our blatant defiance of the Torah of Almighty Yah. And the enemy knows once we defy that, he began to destroy the elements of the foundations of the building blocks of Yah from our minds. And he began to bring in these stones of such corruption. And you began to build on emotions and feelings and desires and lusts and everything that is against Torah. You're never satisfied. You cannot have enough. You want more. You got to have more. You need this and you need that. The old ones will say, I need more of your Shua HaMashiach. Of course, they didn't say it like that. But that's what they meant. I need more of him. I need more of him. Hallelujah. In the midst of great tribulation, or he says, shall tribulation, or he says, or shall the sarah, or the distress. When I'm besieged by the powers that work against the commands of Yah, shall that separate me from Yah? He said, or if I am murda or persecuted, because I stand for Yah, I stand in the truth. Or shall the ra'ah, the famine, the famine of the hearing of the word. There is no famine for bread, but there's a famine for the hearing, the shamach to hear and to obey the Torah, the omir of Yah, his speech, his utterance. There's a famine. He says, shall famine? Separate me, although I desire to hear. Do we truly desire to hear what Yah speaks to us? Are we like that? We, I was glad I had the Shem Shach. I was glad when they said, let us go into the Bayet of Yah. Are you glad? Is there a Gila? A Gila? Don't sit there like damn hypocrites. Don't sit there and pretend. Can we get glad to go to Walmart? We rush, we get dressed, we bathe, we want to look our best. We smile. Come on, Yisrael. When it comes time to come to Yah's house, we're not glad. Let's quit the damn false pretense. That's the only way Yah is going to straighten the matters out in us. He said, I was glad, I rejoiced, I danced. You tell me you dance in your house when it's time to go to Yah's house? We don't give a damn. And we're not glad. We're glad for folly, but this. I shall do that. He says, shall the nakedness of perils, of perils, he said, or shall the sword, shall the sword, shall that separate me from the ways of Yah? Shall I become disenchanted with delusion that there is no compassion? For the love of Yahshua HaMashiach. Did Yahshua do all to please Yah? Then we must do all to please Yah. Yeah. And the only way we can do that through the living power, the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. We have a testimony, but it's not the testimony. It is not the Eddah. The Eddah, the Eddah. The Eddah is the testimony that only, that only deals with the beauty, the power of Almighty Yah. And that power is in Yahshua. So the whole, this dirty whore taught us well uh, to testify. Oh, I quote, quote, quote now. Uh, oh, I think the Lord God Jesus Christ. Uh, I got a new car. I think the Lord God Jesus Christ. Uh, I got a new house. Uh, unquote. Damn fool. You lied to get the car. You fudged the application to get the damn house, you dirty liar. And your God... 
who is the God of this world. Your God said, if you bow down and worship me, these little crumbs off the table I'll give you. Even the dog desired the crumb. He said, you're a dog and I will give you the crumbs. Hallelujah. Shall the swords of great affliction, shall that separate us? Shall the chrep of his word cutting me, shall that separate us? Now just think how many times you have separated even from the messenger when the sword began to cut on your ass, your wickedness. So we are damn pack of hypocrites. We know how to appease ourselves and to pretend that you're a damn hypocrite. You're not going into the kingdom. You're a liar. You're full of shekers. Shekhar. Oh, nothing separate me from the love. Quote. Quote again. Oh, nothing separate me from love of Jesus Christ. Unquote. And yet when the word began, the sword, the hair of Yah began to cut on your barracks. And then what rises? Your hatred. Your damn disdain. I'm talking to Yisrael. We need the healing balm of Yah among us. Your damn disdain. Your lies of your father began to develop in your bosom. And then you go with that disease to corrupt others. That's how we do it, Yisrael. And it's so sad. What shall separate us? He gives us what is hot tab in verse 36. He says, for it is written. It is written. And so I did find where it is written for you to know. Stay there in Romeo 836. But he says, first of all, as it is hot tab, it is written, it is engraved. It has been inscribed. When I see things like that, I want to find out where it's written. Hallelujah. And I we cries here into helium, Psalms 44 and verse 22. Let me finish reading Romans 8:36. For it is written, For your sake we are killed all the day long, accounted as sheep. For the slaughter. See, that was written. He could not speak anything that he had imagined. Yeah. Daweed says to Helium 44, 22. Yes. For your sake, yeah, we are killed all the day long. As we were counted as sheep for the slaughter as Yeshua Hamashiach. And so there shall be a great battle against the elect woman. To find one thing as we have seen the Tazneeth of that from the beginning. We saw in Misraim to kill all that were on the two. We saw it with Herat. When he sought to find out the Torah of Yah. And in this hour... We're going to see it in a greater way. And that is why the enemy is killing our affection. He's killing our desire. He's killing our passion. He's killing our motive, our purpose for you. He's doing everything he can to kill. Every ounce of sentinel of passion for you. And the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. He got us so engaged, so involved that we don't even know. Yah is not even involved in our lives because we don't desire to sit with him. For truly my fellowship is with the Abba and his son, Yahshua HaMashiach. That should be the fellowship of Yisrael. It should be in nothing else but truly with the Abba and the power of his testimony. And the power of what the Nobi has spoken of him. And that power. If any messenger speak not according uh, to the Torah and the testimony... It is because there is no light in him at all. And if we do not have the Torah and the testimony of the power of Yah, then there is no light of Yahshua HaMashiach in us at all, Yisraeli. So we are made as sheep for the slaughter. When you slaughter sheep, you kill them as they move. You just slaughter them. 
And he has sent forth the powers of hell with their slaughtering weapons to kill our minds, to kill our hearts from loving Yah with all. And from loving Yisra'ah as we love ourselves because we don't give a damn a whore. A whore is meant for a man to commit adultery. She's there to satisfy his proclivity of his natural urgent. And so Ramad goes into this whore spirit. Uh, he doesn't come out of her. A whore is a deep ditch. When Ramad goes into a deep ditch, there are no walls to climb out. The other night there was a mouse. I don't even know how he got where he gotten, had gotten. He had dropped down in the kamol. Undoubtedly he thought he would get a little water and get out. And so he was there, it was there just trying to get out, but he couldn't get out. I said, oh man, when I walked and saw him, we do get mice around here, we're in the country. Not rats, but the little mice, they do come in. I've gotten one, two, three already. That's all right. I got something for them. And so he was trying, it was trying to get up. But I said, you can't go nowhere, my friend. You're not going anywhere. I got you. No, sir. No, I don't have to take you out of there. I'm going to expose you and then take you to the place whereby you love most filth. And you have your bowl there. If you can make it now, you're right. I'm quite sure he did not make that journey. You understand? He did not. And we are almost like that, Yisraya. We're looking for some of the filthiest things to dine on instead of eating of the Torah, the manna. That's why he called it manna, for they knew not what they were eating. And when you eat Torah, you don't know what you're eating, but it will bring health, strength. It will bring the life of Yah. It will give you the power, the testimony of Yahshua Hamashiach. So we'll kill all the day long, Yisraya. Yisra'ya, we are destroyed all the day long. Shall these things separate us? He concludes in verse 37. Uh, and I want to take our journey for here. He says, No, nay, no, no. He says, No. And all these things, uh, we are more, that adjective that implies uh, a superior conscience and attitude, attributes. We are more than hazak. We are more than conquerors. We have strength. We are battle strength. And these small skirmishes that we are in, uh, they strengthen us for the battle that is ahead. We have battle strength. We have tenacity, we have uh, endurance, we have the power to prevail. Uh, not only we are conquerors, uh, he said, but we are more, we are superior. Our intensity is superior to the intensity of darkness. When the enemy rises up against us, when all of our enemies uh, as a flood come against us, uh, then Yah raises up the standard. Uh, he calls the power of the testimony of your sure to become more alive and more vivid uh, and stronger in the bosom of Yisrael. That's your standard. Uh, that's the standard of Yah. It is the power of his testimony. He could send him a luck and destroy ten thousands. But he's not going to do it. He's going to raise up the standard of his testimony. He's going to raise up his Edah, his Adah, Yoshua HaMashiach. The power of his truth. He's going to raise that up, Yisrael. He said, yet in all of these afflictions that we perceive to be beyond our ability, ah. Uh, to even uh, battle against them, uh, or even our ability to endure against them. Uh, he said, I'm more, we are more. My state of mind is superior. The quality of my desire and the intensity is far greater than the will of Hashatan. He said, I am more than a Hazakh, more than a conqueror through him, uh, through Almighty Yah in your Shua. That loved us. And when one has the hazakh of Yah, he becomes strong. 
He is made strong. He is a strong man. He, she is a strong woman. They have the strength of Torah. Because there's a great love for Yah. To love Yah with all your heart, soul, mind. And all of your strength in your neighbor as yourself. We are not shallow. We are not weak. There's a progressive growth of power and maturity in us, Yisra'ya. Something is sad in our minds. We don't progress and we don't grow. He said that a woman gets beautiful with age. Her charm, her wisdom, her knowledge, her tenderness, her touch. When a man begins to get older, the charm of, uh, of his horrid hair, the grayness of his hair, it shows a side of his wisdom, uh, of his longevity. Uh, there's a beauty, there's a charm. It ought to be. And hell, we are as corrupt as the world. We are corrupt people. We are corrupt. We're not more than conquerors. And these damn liars, oh, we are more than conquerors, you're not. We can even conquer the onslaughts of hell that come against us. You define the word more in your Miriam Webster. It will define it as having superior qualities of intense motivation, power, drive, desire. Do we have that? And the only way we can have that through Yoshua HaMashiach that loves us. As you have loved me, Abba, I have loved them. As you love Yoshua, he has loved us. And as he loved us, he says, for us to love one another. For us to have a great affinity for each other. You love me and you don't even want my fellowship. You don't even know what love is, man. Woman, you are a damn wicked liar. Man, you are an effeminate, corrupt, immature weakling of a thing. You may have the similitude of a man, but you're not a man. Yah set love right. Is your sure his love? Is the living Torah his love? But then the head of every man is your sure Hamashiach. He has the power to dispense the power of love from his bosom. And then the head of every woman is the man. I don't give a damn whether you buy it. You are never intended for us to live in the fashion we live in this most damnable corrupt society. It has taken the beauty away from the daughters of Tizayon. It has taken your covering your heads. And so I do my thing, I go my place, I go here, I do that. It's not of you. It is not of you. Hallelujah. I want to read from the book of Ezra. I want you to hear as I read. I'm not going to even tell you what chapter and verses. We are a people that we are lazy. A little sleep, a little folding of hand. Then what comes? Poverty, doesn't it? We are spiritually bankrupt. We are spiritually poor. We fold our hands. We love laughter. We love folly. Our Zachin Benamin said to us that we should be diligent and vigilant as he read unto us al Khafi Imant that the women should be sober, vigilant, the elderly women. And so that is applicable to the man above all. Because the soberness and the beauty, the strength and the maturity of a man, it ought to reflect in his woman. It ought to reflect among the daughters of Tizayon. I like the quietness. I, I'm not disturbed because you don't say, oh, man, hallelujah. I'm not disturbed at that. Hallelujah. It doesn't bother me. Not one bit. Just letting you know. I prefer you listen if you know how to listen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You show me how to do a thing one time. You give me instructions. I'll get it done. I'll get it done for you. Hallelujah. I want to begin here in the book of Ezra. 
And you can do your historical research. There is not much on this Nabi. There is not much on this messenger, the scribe of Omariya, this Kohan. But I do know that his name implies that Yah is Arham. So he calls us to rise up in this man that will bring about the restoration of Yisra'ya. The matter of fact, there are scholars that will say that he is the Sechen Moshe, but he is not the Sechen Moshe. As when they came with the same power, the same similitude, uh, and the same Torah that uh, Moshe came in. And his name is Yoshua Hamashiach. He may have had some of the same essentials as Moshe, but he was not the second Moshe, you understand? Before Moshe was, Yoshua is. Before he was developed, Yoshua spoke. It was the power of the words of Yah's heart that spoke. And so it was. But he was granted by Yah to bring about the restoration of the Bayit of Yisra'ya. A people that had been under the captivity of Bevel, and our minds are still under the captivity of Bevel. We are confused. We are before Allah. We don't know which direction to take. We don't know what is sound truth. We are searching here and there and haven't found a damn thing. We are listening here, we are listening there and still have not found one thing at all. It is one thing that when a man finds the mother load, he knows it. He doesn't have to see the goal, but he knows it's there. There's something in his bosom, although he doesn't have the intuition or the knowledge of the matter or the expertise of the finery of certain machines to find it. He knows it. No doubt about it. He doesn't question his heart on that matter. We're always questioning the heart of the messenger. But we never question our hearts. So he was the one that was to bring about the restoration. And to lead the people out of captivity, he is Yah's help. Is not Yahshua the help of Almighty Yah? He is his Azar. He is the one that protects us. He is the one that relieves us. He is the one that is the one that succor. The special help of Yah that guards us, protects us, and keeps us. He is that one. And so by the power of the mandate of Yah, Yah begins to deal with Ezra concerning his people, their dilemma, what had brought them into the captivity, the Shebuth. Not only were they in bondage in the natural, but their minds were in bondage whereby the Torah of Yah brought no delight unto them and the messenger began to speak. I want to read. It says, and the word of Yah, the Dabab, the speech, the utterance of Yah, the Melach, dispensed from Hashemaam. He said, it came, it bow, and the word bow to enter in. It entered into the bosom of Ezra. And this is the utterance saying, he said, I want you to go your way and show my people their sinful deeds. Show my people their chata, their acts that are contrary to the Torah, their actions that defile the Torah. Show my people, expose, make it known, reveal unto them that which they think is not an encroachment upon me. Show them how they encroach upon my throne and what kind of disdain they have for me. Show my people their sinful deeds. He said, and their bane, their offspring, their children, their wickedness, which they have done against me. It is not me you speak against. It is not uh, the individual, but you speak against Yah. He said, what they have done against me. And we are people that think we have never done anything against Almighty Yahweh. He says, show them. You don't know what you've done. You must be shown. It is like that little child think that she understands the very perplexity of life. She must be shown, Yisra'ya. Show my people their sinful ways. 
and the wickedness of their children, which they have done against me. For what reason? That they may tell their children's children. He said, because the sin of their fathers are increased in them. Did not Yah say in the book of Debarim, he will visit the iniquity, the Ovon, upon the children of the Avat, of the Avat, of the father, of the progenitor, of the father that hates him, Shanae. Did he not say that? Did he not say that? He will visit the iniquity, the Ovon, upon the children of the Avat that hates me, even down to the third and the fourth. Generation, oh, I love you. You're a damn liar. Love is more than a damn expression. For Yah so loved the Ulam that He gave. Love is always a nothan. It is always a bestowing. It's always a giving. Your heart rejoices in that. That's what love is. It's always giving. It's always a desire. To give, to share. For he so loved the world that he gave, did he not know for Anna? His only son, his Raya, the who has taught us in a corrupt way. And we think we're doing right, but we're not doing right. Show my people their sinful ways. Show them why that they may tell their children. You tell that one that she may tell her children. You show them the ways of God, you teach them, that they may tell their children. He say, as uh, they increase, so did their sins, uh, because the sins of their fathers are, are increased in them, uh, for they have forgotten me. Yes, not in our memory of the day, because he is a restrainer. He is a very present help in the time of all of our trouble. He is our Azar. He is our succor. He is the one that relieves us from the difficult matters of life. Yeah. And as the sins increase in them, they have forgotten me. And they have offered up unto the strange God. What God? The God of their belly. The God of their lust. The God of their sin. The God of their greed. The God of their wickedness, their Baal, their Lord, they have offered unto them. He that brought them out of the land of Misraim, he brought us out, did he not? Yes. Did not y'all bring us out yes. from all of our activities and our sinful ways? Yes. He brought us out. He yoshach, he delivered us. He broke the shackles of bondage off of us. I delivered them out of the land of Misraim from the house of he brought us out of the house of uh, Abu Da. Abu Da. He said, You were slaves. Every nation has not been slaves in a nation. He said, I brought you, Yisra'ya, out of the Abu Da. Not the Shabuth or the Shabi, but the Abu Da. The Abu Da. I brought you out of the house of slavery. That's why the enemy is enslaving the whole world. To get to the realm that I'm telling you. His own children. He's enslaving them. To find the remnant of Yisra'ya. And that's a fact. He said, but they have provoked a ka'as. They provoked me. They became angry at me. To cause me to show my anger. My distaste. They vexed me. He said they became angry. They provoked me to wrath and they despised my Musa. We're a nation that despised the counsel of the Torah. We don't want anyone to instruct us in the ways of Torah. We despise that. You've never sit before Wanda, whether it is your Hot or your Akha, and there was a, a, a violent hatred. You didn't even want to assemble with them because you didn't want to hear their voice. There's a sick, damn, twisted mind in you. You are sick. I'd rather pretend and say I'm doing this instead of coming into the congregation of fellowship. I'm sick of her. I'm sick of him. You are a damn sick Jezebel. You are a damn fool of a man. You're twisted in your damn corruption. Children do that. Oh, I'm sick of mother. 
I've heard of many say, I wish I had obtained to the wise counsel of my avant or my mother. I would have not gone through what I have gone through in life. A child loves to oneself bring destruction and bring shame. And we bring shame upon Yah. He said, you have despised my counsel. And because you were none of my counsel, you despise all of my counsel. You will not hear my instructions. He said, when your calamity come upon you as the whirlwind, Yah says, I'm going to mock you. And I'm going to laugh. I want you to hear me, Yisrael. We must be more than a conqueror in this hour. Hallelujah. He says unto us, pull off then your hair off your head. That's what a true Nazarite was. A Nazarite did not grow their hair for 10, 20 years. It was a vow, whether you are male or female. That you committed a vow unto Yah. And you kept yourself. You did not touch a dead body. Well, you touched the dead things of the world. You touched those that are dead in trespasses and sin. You have, you have annulled the vow of a Nazarite. You touch those that are dead and trespasses and sin. Your damn wicked sons and your daughters. Your damn wicked relatives. You touch the hands of those that are in the store. And all of that that are unclean. And so what the Nazarite would do, it was, a, it was a sign of their commitment unto Yah. They would cut the hair and then they would burn it. Hallelujah. And that is what the hair represents. The hair represents the growth uh, in essence of our mind, our maturity, uh, our spirituality. Uh. And so what we must do, uh, we, must, uh, we must impale our head uh, and allow the head of Yah, Yahshua HaMashiach, to be our head. So we offer up our will, our desire unto Yah. Everything comes from this. The head. It doesn't come from here. There is nothing that flows from this muscle. Let no one trick you. This is the laba. This is the, uh, the lev of man. You don't love from here. You love from here. This is the essence of the here. Because this is the essence of the nefesh. As you would say the soul. This is what life. This is what commands life. Not this. This is what commands life. Hallelujah. He did not say let the heart. Let the mind. The same mind. Hallelujah. Pull off then your hair and cast all evil upon them. In that body of Yahshua, he bore all the evil and the sins of Yisra'ya. For they have not been obedient. Yah said they have not walked in the discipline. They have not been obedient unto my Torah. But they are a rebellious people. Now we have not rebelled, have we? We are rebellious people. We are people that rebel against the simplicity of Torah. He commands us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And we rebel against that. It is a sad shame that men don't mature and women don't mature. They're not progressing, they're digressing. And they're staying, still walking in the same immaturity, their attitude, their personality. Their disposition is worse now than it was 10 years ago. I want to be a man that as this act brought out to be a man that's grave and sober with temperance. I have a balance. I want a balance. To have patience. What is that? To, to suffer the great agony of whatever the circumstances without complaining. That's why I always say to my Zakin, all is well, man. I have no complaints. And I have none. To do all things without murmuring and complaining. That's the essence of patience. That you endure the afflictions and the great agonies and you don't complain. You just rejoice and say hallelujah. 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 For if we love Yah, for we know that all things we Yah, that we realize, we understand that all things that work for the top of them that love Yah. And those that are called, his elect according, uh, for what? According to whose purpose? My purpose or his purpose? His purpose. We have not been obedient to the Torah of Yah, but we have been rebellious people. Yah says, how long shall I, had I, shall I forbear? How long shall I put forbear them? Into whom have I done so much tough? When I read that, he said, I've done so much excellent for them. How long shall I forbear them? How long shall I endure them? How long shall I be patient with them? That's why the czar, the tribulations of Yah, you're not going in as a soldier. 
profound message as I can preach. But it's one thing that a soldier, a soldier is almost like the elementary stages of, of the military uh, complex. You must progress unto a warrior. And a warrior has a purpose that is greater than his own purpose. I was reading the other day the man got killed in Afghanistan. It was his 11th tour over there in Afghanistan. That's a warrior. A soldier fulfilled his commitment uh, and they run from the battle. They're not a Uriah. They're not a Uriah. They run from the battle. And so to be a soldier, I went in the military as a soldier. You don't even understand the protocol of a soldier. You must develop to be a warrior. You must grow and progress. You must learn that. It's one thing about a warrior when, when, when you see him, they say, Uriah, nobody like him. A soldier just does what is commanded of him. A warrior go beyond the commands. A warrior dig for the deeper things and the greater things and the things that give value. And to bring a delight unto the love of the king, Yoshua. That's why even in the drunkard stoop of Uriah, he said, no, I won't. I don't care how the world tried to cause us to become inebriated with the cares of this life. The deceitfulness of riches. And then we allowed the other lost to enter in. And then he began to choke out the word of Yah. You still sleep at the steps or at the feet of Yahshua HaMashiach. He said, I may be drunk, but I'm not going home. My ark, my fellow soldiers are out in the field. He said, I'm going to lay this in honor just to lay at the door steps of the king's house. If I'm nothing more as that, we said, but, but a broom sweeper in the kingdom of Yah, that's all right with me. That'd be a nice song. Let me be a broom sweep of yonder kingdom. That's all right with me. Hallelujah. 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 Won't be no dust there. Won't be no, won't be no shadows of darkness there. You won't see shadows like you see in here. For the sound of righteousness, the power of his delight of Torah shall shine and nothing will hide. Not even light will hide. Not even light will hide. Not even light can hide. Nothing. Hallelujah. Nothing will hide from him. He says this. He has treated us tough. Yah says many kings. He's going to destroy this whore of a king. America. The united demon of uh, other states. Many kings have I about. I have blotted them out. I have destroyed them for your sake. He say, Pharaoh and his servants and all of his power, I have brought them down to the gates of Sheol, to the gates of hell. I have smitten them. I have crushed them for your sake. When the kingdoms of hell rise up against us, when the kings of the darkness of this world, he has smitten them for our sake. Although we have rebelled, he's done tough things for us. Oh, he woke me up this morning and he started me, hallelujah, on the way of Yahshua. And we don't give a damn. We don't lift our hands, our voices. And brachia, we have no, we have no voice to contend against the powers of hell. To say he is great, he is mighty. We don't look up. We don't look up and see the power of Yahshua. And hell, you go in Walmart, you act like a damn fool for a $2 piece of damn Chinese trash. But it's all coming down. They land them off in the manufactories of Japan because their output, their GDP is dropping. Nobody has money to buy now. And yes, I've done all these tough things to you. And you don't give a damn. And we think we are conquerors. We think we're going to overcome the onslaught of hell. You think you have, uh, you, you, you guard the misvah, yeah, you keep the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach, the misvah, yeah, based upon these two principles of, of the power of his witness, uh, by his immutability, he cannot lie. That is his testimony and the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach is to love Yahweh with all and your neighbor as yourself. They're equal. You're a damn lie if you say you love him and you don't love me. You're full of shysting. You're damn wicked Jezebel. You're a liar, man. You're a dirty bastard out of hell. You're full of it. Give a damn if you don't like me. 
I don't care if you don't care for what I say. I was talking to a precious Ach. He said to me, I mentioned you the other day with an elder there in Missouri. He said, what about that preacher there in South Carolina? Oh, oh no, 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 no. These are the places where they draw two, three, four, five hundred for the feast days. We can't even draw a few here because this is a generation that doesn't want anything that's genuine. They don't want me. He said, when I mentioned the preacher, did he even get a chance to mention your name? The preacher in South Carolina? As I said to my Akshimri, I say, believe me, you will be surprised of the people that know about us and know of us here. You understand? We're not going to back down. Even the dogs, my enemy, I'm feeding them today. They'll go to the soup bowl and try to find some crumbs. They can't eat this because it's not meant for the dogs. The bread is not meant for the damn dogs, you faggots. It's not meant for you effeminate men. This bread is meant for the children of Israel. She said, true master, as a nose, as a dog. But he's on the dogs to give me some crumbs. He said, oh, woman. Ma, ma, ma. I found no imuna greater than this even among all Israel. We don't want to say that we are wicked and rebellious and corrupt and our hearts stink. We don't want to say that. We want to say that I stink or she stink or he stink or this one stink. You don't want to say how you stink. And you are the one that stinks like a dirty dog. I will, man. Don't worry. I have destroyed kings. He has destroyed many just to preserve you. He's shown us his power to conquer. We must. Must we not be as Chadosh as he is in Hashemayim? Is he not perfect? If he, is he not Tommy complete, perfect, whole? Should we not be that way? Again, the messenger speaks unto Ezra. He says, speak you therefore to them, saying, I want you to tell them what Yah says. And he gives him a dialogue of what things to say. But I want to speak from a Pacific verse here. He said, and not only you have seen my power and my ability to triumph, he says, but you have Gaal, he says, uh, and triumph not in my name for the destruction of the enemies. But even to this day, do you yet murmur? He said, you did not sing of the great triumphant power of your enemies and give honor to my name. When we enter into the presence of Yah, we should shout hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're a bunch of dead, we're dead. And we're trespasses in our sins. That's why we can't do it. I'm not going to stop saying it, Israel. We're so full of our sinful ways. We come before the presence of Yah. We don't lay down our wicked attitude and our gifts. Uh, and just think what tough thing. Uh, he has allowed you to walk into his presence. Uh, you don't even give a damn. You don't consider. He said, and you have triumphant. And the power of my name. And you don't give a damn about me? Hallelujah. And it says this. We know this. It says here. Hallelujah. I want to read this. I'll tell you what this is. He says again in the book of Ezra. And triumph not in my name for the destructions of your enemy. But even to this day you do murmur. Shemoth Exodus 15.1 Then sang they the song of Moshe. The children of Yisrael, this song to Yah and spoke, saying, I will sing to Yah. I will sing, I will sing all the verses of the kindness of Yah. I will sing, O Yisrael. Yah, we should always sing. That's what it says. Yah says, you have triumphed in my name. And you yet murmur. And yet, Yah says in Shemoth, uh, it says, Then sang Moshe, uh, then sang Moshe, uh, and the children of Israel, uh, this song to Yah, and spoke, saying, uh, I will sing to Yah, for he has triumphed. He has triumphed. 
He has got ah, he has triumphed wonderfully. The horses and his riders are thrown into the sea. We don't sing like that. We sing over a damn chicken biscuit or piece of pie. We smile over a damn cupcake. Our bellies rejoice over its own God. But when it comes to y'all, we don't give a damn. He gave you victory this morning that we don't know how to sing of the triumphant song of y'all that. Uh, oh, he woke me up this morning. Ah, he started me on my way. Oh, yeah. Come on, Yisrael, y'all. We are a rebellious house. Uh, and we say that we are more than conqueror hell. We are not even one that has even conquered we haven't conquered our flesh. We have no power to impel it, to destroy it, to kill it, to eradicate the emotions, to bring down the strong opposition against Yah, the will to sin, the pleasure of our own wickedness. It must come down to the gates of hell. You're not going in. Light and darkness cannot dwell in the same house. You cannot have the testimony of light and the witness of such damn corruption that oozes out of us that we stink. We stink like shysting. We stink. We stink. And yet he has given us a fragrant. The testimony of Yeshua. I will mind. And we frankly don't give a damn. You're not going into the kingdom. Well, I'm going to finish the day. Don't worry. I, will be, I may be warned. That's why I didn't go on live last night. Because I knew this would take a little more effort. You understand? And a little more energy. This doesn't come by not spending proper time with Yah. And not being engaged in Torah. You can't get this by spending a few moments. You don't get this by just piecing something together. It takes a labor to get this. You understand? And what you put into anything, it will reflect your investment. You don't give a damn, you're not going to invest time. You're going to look for the most expedient way, the easiest way. Now, hell, I want the way that there's a challenge. That I got to lay the book down and walk away and take a break. And then come back. I'm more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. He goes on to say in the book of Ezra, he says, Seeing, Yah says, seeing you have forsaken me. Yah says, I will azab. I will forsake. I will abandon. I will depart. I will leave you behind. I will forsake you also. When you desired me to be merciful, he said, I shall have no mercy upon you. That's Yah. Hallelujah. That's almighty Yah, Yisrael. Let no one kid you. Oh, he's going he's gonna to have pity on, our, on us. He's not going to do it. He's not going to do it, Yisrael. Because we have not listened to Yah. We have abandoned the will of Yah. We have abandoned his ways. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, yes. Hallelujah. 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 How long will we as simple ones love simplicity and we that fools hate knowledge? Yah says, turn you at my reproof. He said, behold, I will pour out my ruach upon you. I will make known you unto you the power of Torah. He said, when I speak to you, turn, turn around. And I will make my power, the power of my ruach. I will cause it to be poured out upon you. And you will, you will understand the wisdom of Torah. Because we don't turn from our wickedness and our sins. We don't understand what Yah says. Just like he says you have refused me. He says here in the book of Proverbs. Because I've called you have refused. I've stretched out your sure my hand. And you don't even regard my hand. You don't even regard the testimony of Yahshua. He said, but you have said it not all of my counsel. And you will do none of my reproof. I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock you when your fear comes. When your fear comes as desolation and destruction. Comes as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish come upon you. Then when you call upon me. He said, you're going to call upon me for your mercy. For my mercies. But I will show you no mercies. It's going to take a tremendous tenacity of fortitude to overcome. For the battle is set in array. For the enemies of Yah, his, uh, those that sunni, those that hate him, his Oyeb, and Oyeb, and Oyeb, and Oyeb, is one that has uh, a fortified intent to destroy, to dismantle, and to bring down. And that's what the enemies of Yah are. 
And we as enemies of the, uh, of the stake of Yahshua, we are trying to bring that down. If we're friends of the world, if we love our worldly tenacity, our worldly driven mo motives, uh, we're an enemy of Almighty. God damn this wicked world. I say it, damn it. He's going to bring it down to the gates of hell. Sure he is. Hallelujah. Yah says, whensoever you shall call upon me, I will not shemach you. For you have tame, you have defiled by your unclean idolatry, your ways of whoredom, you have defiled your hands with dumb, with sin. Our hands are full of sin. That's why we cannot lift up our hands. He tells us to do that. Lift up your voice, your hands, O ye, we that are of Hashem, of, of the Ruach of Yah. That's why we can't enter into the presence of Yah and lift up our hands. The first thing you say, lift up your hands. You don't do that. You do this. I will, man. We do that. We do that. But he means lift up your hands. Uh, oh. Some of you all have never done that. You don't know how to do it. You don't know how to. And you love him. You don't give a damn. You're a damn liar. No liar going into the kingdom. You heard Art Thomas on last week. He was, as he called in our precious friend there in Memphis. He said to me, Reak. And I've thought about this all week. He said, Reak, my little grandbaby. And he enjoys his grandchildren. He says to me, we talked the other night. That's one night I missed prayer because we were on the telephone talking. I was talking with someone and then he called. He says, my little grandbaby, when she sings, she sings with such expression, her hands and her voice, and she moves and, and her body contorts. We get twisted over a big old pork sausage biscuit. I will mark. Yeah. Our emotions are not inflamed when they when it comes to Yah. Yeah. It is the truth, my Amen. Yabrach. Hallelujah. Yeah. I want to move quickly because I Hallelujah. Yah says Whensoever you whensoever you shall call upon me, I will not hear you. For you have told me you have defiled your hands with sin. And your feet are swift to commit murder. What murder? If you hate Yisrael, if this damn united snakes of demons hate Yisrael, you are a murdering nation. You hate your ach, your hope without a cause. What is say? Oh, I don't, I didn't say hater. You despise my present. You despise her present. You cannot even commune. You cannot conversate with Wanda like you can with those you think you love. You are a damn liar. You are a murderer full of hatred. You can talk to this woman, can't talk to that one. I can talk to him, but I can't talk to him. I can talk to him, but I can't talk to him. You are a damn murderer, you liar. Oh, I, 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 I don't think, I, I love her, you damn hypocrite. You flat out Jezebel, you bastard slip of a man. Yeah, I'm going to drive it because even these words don't drive them away. You understand? Turn your internet connection off. Hallelujah. He says, your hands are so full of sin, you murder each other. You hate them without a cause. You hate Yisrael without a cause. Why? You have, you have not as it were, you have not as it were that you have forsaken me, but you have forsaken your own self, says Yah. You don't, if a man, a man that commits adultery with a woman, he hates his own nephesh. You commit adultery or you go away from the beauty of Yah's chastisement, his correction, his musa, and you join yourself to a harlot spirit to satisfy your own damn flesh. It's because you hate you. And when you hate you, you don't give a damn about no one. You pretend and you lie. That's the way we are. We lie to each other because we lie to Yah. 
I preach I love you, whether no one loves you. I love me. I love you, preacher. Preach on. I wish I had been a young man, been brought up like this in this kind of teaching. I've always wanted this, you understand? Never did get it in this magnitude. I want to read that again. Hallelujah. 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 He says, you have not as it were forsaken me. You think you're forsaken me. And that's what he said. He said, but you have azab yourself. Says, yeah, you have forsaken you. So how can you, if you're forsaken you, love? How can we love Yisra'ya? We know we are forsaken ourselves because that's why we engage with the world so much. We love the world. We love the things of the world. We love the lust of our flesh, the lust of our eyes, the pride of life. These things are not of Yah. They're not of Yah. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So you have forsaken yourself. You don't even ch ch chastise yourself. This says your Almighty. Have I not entreat you as an avat entreat his son? Has he not loved us as a father loves his son? You think that this man right here, Aak Yosipi Yah, you think that he needs a break from his little son? You think uh, he wants to go somewhere and leave his children? Yah doesn't want to leave us. That's amazing that people say that I need a break from the children. My mother was uh, a woman of the evening in her ways. I have never heard my mother say that in all of her life. I need a break from my children. I have never heard my mother say that. If y'all gave me beautiful daughters and sons, I want a break from them. Uh, we are the sons of Yisra'ya. You are the bane. You are the daughters of Yisra'ya. You, you think he needs a break from us? Uh, in all of our filthiness, he still corrects us. Uh, and he still loves us and brings us back uh, into his bosom. <clears throat> I've never heard my mother say I need a break from my children. I've never heard my mother say that. You just don't understand. No, you don't give a damn. You're not going to tell me that man is going to say I need a break from my son. No, you just set the house in order and say sit down, son. And that's it. That's the break. I'm glad school is on. I can send them away to the demons. You are a sick bastard of a beast. Hallelujah. I don't want no break. If I had sons and daughters, I don't want to break from Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. I don't want to be my, by myself. You can. I don't want to be in my own little world. I don't want that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have I not intrigued and loved you as an Avat, Avat loves a son, and an Im the daughter, and a nurse the babes, that you would be my people, and I should be your almighty Abba, your Yah. And that you will be my children, and I should be your Abba. He said, I gather you together, as Daiweed says. I gather you together as a hen gather her chicks under her wings. But now, what shall I do to you? I said, I've done all of these wonderful deeds against you. What shall I do to you? Yah says, I will garage, I will expel you, I will divorce you, I will drive you. Listen, he said, I will cast you from my pony, my face. That's Yah, our father. Oh, my mother would say to me, get out of my face, boy. I don't want to see you. That was her anguish of my wickedness and my corrupt activities, the the vileness of my actions. Yah says, I'm going to cast you away from my presence, my face. When you shall have offered korban or oblations to me, Yah said, I will turn my face. When you come into his house with Toda, enter into the presence of Yah with Toda in your lap because you don't give a damn. You don't enter that way. You enter stiff and cold as hell, wicked, unclean. We come into his bed where his name is and where we come to fellowship in the power of his witness of Yahshua. We should enter into his presence with Toda. With Toda. He said, when you even offer up your korban, your ob obligations, obligations, Obama got one with his hand, didn't he? I saw that. I got that one, all right? Hallelujah. 
When your obligation, when you, when you offer obligations to me, I will turn my face from you. Uh, Yah says, I have my eyes, I have rejected, I have despised. I have refused your solemn feast days, your new moons, and even your brit milah, your circumcision of your heart. Yes, yeah, circumcise the foreskin of your heart. We need the harat, the sword of Yah, to cut back the filth, this damn fleshly nature. We're going to die. We're going to die in the natural sense. There will, yes, will some of you that are alive remain when your sure come. But it is a foolish effort not to realize that our lives are drawing closer to the climactic end for us to continue in the same damn childish stupidity of paths that have not produced a damn thing but more anger, more hostility, more hatred, more vain abolitions unto Yah. You would think we will grow up, that we will leave, uh, we will leave an insignia for our young ones, for them to progress uh, and to grow on and to mature and to love Yah and to lift their hands. Come on, uh, you wicked, foolish of an old man. You don't lift your hands. Uh, what in the hell you think they're young man? Uh, you old silly woman uh, that's stupid in your damn wicked, sinful, set ways. Uh, what do you think is going to happen? We've had those among us that we've called mothers. They were not even a mammy. They had no damn mothering spirit. They didn't give a damn about nobody. They didn't give a damn about their own. Their own from their own bosom. A will man. A mother teaches her daughter. And brings up her in the nurturing and the truth. And the power of Torah. Damn them all. He's going to damn them. Oh, you, you shouldn't say that. I'm saying that they're cut off from me. Let them go on. I don't give a damn. That's right, hallelujah. My, uh, hallelujah. Yah says, I sent to you my servant the Nabi. When you have taken, whom you have taken and slain, you have torn their bodies to pieces, uh, whose blood I require at your hand, says Yah. They have destroyed every Nabi in Yerushalayim. It is Zion. Uh, and that's what we do. Is, uh, if a Nabi stands before us, we destroy him uh, with our hatred. Uh, we tear him to pieces. Uh, you can imagine those that they will leave service here. They will go home and tear the message. Uh, try to tear me to pieces and look what the world has done to them. Uh, they're torn to damn pieces. Uh, He commands us to touch not his anointed and do the nobby no harm. That may be of Yah. Leave him alone. If he is not, Yah will bring him down. Your damn words are not going to bring me down, Jezebel. You damn fools, your words and your lies are not. And definitely not some damn money. I don't give a damn about money. Hallelujah. I don't give a damn about money. I don't give a damn about money. You may care, but I don't. Hallelujah. This says Almighty Yahweh. He said, your house is Yasham. It is desolate. Your house is ruined. There's no life in a ruined house. There's no life. Nothing grows from the ruins of what is desolate. It is a barren land, forsaken. He said, your house is forsaken. Yisra'ah, I will cast you out as the wind does the chaff. As the wind drives the chaff, I shall cast you out, Yisra'ah. And your children shall not be fruitful. Let us look at the genetics or, 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 or the offspring of our birth, of our wounds. Our children are not fruitful. They're wicked as hell. They're vile. They're unclean. They're dirty dogs and dirty Jezebels. Your sons, your daughters, and their babies. Come on, Yisraya. I'm going to drive you out. Because we have forsaken him. We've forsaken the mandate of Torah. We've forsaken the, the mandate of our home. Here we sit down and play video games. I will never do that with my sons and daughters. Never. 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 You sit down and laugh. In my days, an older man would never, even when his son was older than him, he was careful how he entertained his father. Today, the young women speak to their email like they are nothing. I got children. You damn fool, a woman. They don't even honor them, and their children disregard them in the same damn wicked breath. I don't care if you don't love me. You don't love your shoe. And your children shall not be fruitful. For they have kalah, they have despised. 
I'm trifle, I'm nothing to them. Oh, I, I know Yahweh. <laughs> hey, boy, what's up, homie? What's up? You know, they're a bunch of jackasses. Pray for my son. I'm not praying for the dirty beast, the pig. I will pray one prayer. Turn him over to Hashatan and let the devil destroy him. You will love a damn wicked son more than you love me. You will lay awake at night worrying about a damn wicked Jezebel of a son than you will lay at night, awake at night worrying about uh, even the strain of the difficulties of the Re'ach. My Ima would always say to me, I wish all of my children were like you. I don't have to worry about you. I wish they were like you. And you're more concerned over the devil than you are the house of Yisrael. Yeah, I'm going to press on. And we say we're more than conquerors. We're liars. And your children shall not be fruitful. For they have chala. They have despised me. They give a little light juvenile account of me. He says they have despised my mitzvah. And done the things that are evil before me. Your house, your bed will I give to the people that shall come. He said, there shall be a nation of people that shall, shall, shall raise up Yisra'ya. And I'm going to give your house to that. They're going to control your house. They're going to control what you eat. They're going to control what's in your house. They're going to control your wealth. It's not among those of the diasporas and those that are in this land. It's not our house being controlled. If not, the landlord doesn't control it, the electric lord. If the electric lord, the water lord. It was one thing, the strength of a king. It was one thing that the king did. All the land belonged to the king. He was a righteous man. And it was in his power and his strength. If I own this piece of land, I didn't pay taxes on it. It was in the king's power of his dominion to protect your land. This damnation robs and steals and kills and they have, been, have caused you to be in bondage unto their system. Because we have hated them, we have taught our sons to hate Yah. Because we have despised Yah, we have taught our daughters. We have taught our grandchildren to despise Yah. We have taught them how to shake their ass, how to dance, paint their toenails, how to paint their fingernails, how to get a perm in their damn head. But we don't teach them to have the head or let the head of your shoe be the head. That's why the women today, they're miserable and the men are miserable. Why? Because where do you find a wife? Where do you find one? And that's the truth. Hallelujah. And the man get discouraged. No, he, he put something in man. He didn't put in woman. I'm telling you that. That's just it. He is still going to use man. I don't give a damn what this feminine world tells you. It's a damn feminine world. You ought to know any laws of America that purports homosexuality and every kind of freak dog it is. Uh, raise up damn dirty whores like Lindsay Lohan uh, and pay them millions of dollars to shake her ass like a dirty bitch. Like a dog that sleeps with every dog. That's what she is. A dope popping hoe. And this is what is promoted among you to, to, to generate aspiration, inspirations to your daughters. Your sons that want something like that. No, I did not curse. It is the proper expression of a female dog. And this is what pours into your home, into the minds of your children. You don't give a damn about you You hate him. You said that 10 hours on that and no hours in the Torah teaching them. You're wicked. Hallelujah. Can I go on? Your house will I give to a people that shall come. The people of Bavel. A nation of people that shall rob your home. Bring you on the shabuth. On the captivity. Enslave you. Enslave you. You have all the time for the master. No time for your daughter. You out slave me to get bread for your son. No time for your daughter. No relief at all. You can't get comfortable because the rent man or the, the landlord is pressing. And when the landlord is not pressing, the credit lord is pressing. When the credit lord is not pressing, then the fool lord is pressing. Sure it is. He tell us to come out of her, my people. Be ye separate. We see the time fill you, not the fellowship one with the other. That we may have the strength of not the number that we have, but our labor with one hand. I was saying to the, uh, the other day, we're all getting older. We're all over 50 sitting here. We must unite in one hand to labor. You can't be sloughy. You may hurt a little bit. Get up. You're going to have a few pains. Let's roll. There are men that work every day with pains. There are women that go out every day. Listen to me, Yisra'ya. This is not a snare. I'm just telling you that. That's a fact. We have to use one hand. You don't slight your brother. 
You don't slight your sister. You don't look for something easy to do. Uh, you take charge. Let me do that. That's how you do it. That's what love does. And yet for the wicked oppressor, we'll go out of way. Yes, sir, Mr. Bossman, I get that. I will mind. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, for they have despised my misvah and done things that are evil before me. Your house will I give to the people that shall come, which shall not have heard of me. Our grandpappies and grandmammies came here on ships of bondage, shackles, cruel, they were getting in the confield all day long. And they were singing under the bondage of the yoke of shackles. And they were singing the song, Kumbaya. 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 Not that group of people there in the land of what we call Yisraya. Kumbaya. They taught us that when I was in a segregated school of all black children. Deep in the south here in South Carolina. One of the first songs they taught me in, in the first grade, we're going to sing the song, Kumbaya. They will say, it's an old spiritual Negro hymn. Kumbaya, 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 oh yeah, Kumbaya. Listen to this verse again in Ezra. He said, I will give you into a hand of a people which have not heard of me. And so the master that drove him would say, What would you say, boy? I say, Kumbahaya. Who is that boy? He said, That made everything. Oh, you damn pagan boy, go on, sing your song. You damn hypocrites can sit here all you want to. Yah says, I will give you to people that have not heard of me. I will give you to the Assyrians. I will give you to the people of Babel. I will give you to a nation that don't even know my name. Hallelujah. Yet shall believe me. They go to know. Oh yeah, that's what, what's happening to y'all for because God did that. Sure. Y'all dis disrespect God. Y'all rebel. Come on, that's the truth. That was taught in the Baptist tradition, the Methodist, the segregation, the Pentecostal, all of that. That's a fact. He said, yet they're going to know they shall believe me. To whom? To whom? I've shown no signs. I've given them no signs. I've given them no reference of me. Yet shall they do that which I have commanded them. Well, that means that they love you. Can I ask you a question then? I want to ask you one question, you wise one. Did Yah raise up Pharaoh? Did he know him? No, he did not know him. But he used Pharaoh uh, and he hardened his heart uh, that he may make known the power of his might. And the people, Yisrael, that's in every nation, that they're here under the complexion of, uh, of the skin colors, you understand. Uh, he said, I'm going to cause the oppressor to oppress you. Uh, you're going to have to be more than a warrior. Yes. You're going to be more than a conqueror to overcome that. I'm going to cause the demon powers to rise up. You're going to cause your sons and daughters, because you've despised me, they're going to despise you. You might as well hear me. Yeah. Wherever you are, you might as well shout hallelujah. Ha have they all dropped off the line of uh, oxymion? Uh, do we have anyone? Give me, just let me see. All right. All right. Hallelujah. All right. All right. All right. Ooh. Mars! More folks there than here. All right, but this preacher's going to press on. Just stay there. Hallelujah. Hell, the folks are sitting on concrete beaches today for a football game. I will, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to give you to that people whom I've shown no sign. He's shown us signs. For our forefathers has given us Wisdom of the signs that they have shown us. Yes, shall do, do what I command them. He raised up Pharaoh. He did what he commanded him. Did he, raise up, uh, did he raise up Herod? Did he do what he commanded him? They all, even the wicked, do what Yah commands him. He said they have seen no prophet. They don't even know what a Nobi is. And I'll send my Nobi unto Yisrael. We will know what a prophet is if he stood before us. 
We will know the power of the prophet Anobi of Yah, a messenger that has the coals of fire on his tongue. Because we have been allowed by Yah that our minds become so homogenized. You give folks real milk, they don't want that. Oh, that tastes nasty. It tastes funny. You give them real beef, they don't like that. You give them beef that is truly grass-fed, they don't want that. And no chemicals. They don't want nothing like that, Yisra'ya. You give them meat to eat, they still want milk. We don't want meat today. We want milk today. Hallelujah. 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 They have seen no prophet, no nobi, yet they shall call their sins to remember and acknowledge them. Yah said, I take to witness his aid, the two messengers. I take to witness, listen to this, the free unmerited pardon of the people to come, whose little ones rejoice in the gladness of Yah. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, although we have not seen him with bodily eyes, yet in Ruach they believe uh, the things I say. Although we have not seen, greater is he that have not seen, but believe, uh, than you that have seen me, Yahshua said, and you still don't believe. What a great blessing that he justify us by Imuna. For the just shall live by imuna by faith and we live by the faith of yah in his son yahshua hamashiach and so although with the bodily eyes we have not seen him but in the ruach of yah we know him we yada we yada yah hallelujah hallelujah I get on Zakin Yarabiya about crying, so I can't break down today, all right. I'm gonna break down when he's not here because he will he'll get on me, all right. Hallelujah. That's all right. Hallelujah. 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 Yah goes on to say, and now, my brothers, or ach, behold, I want you to realize and understand what splendor and see the people. That come from the east. To whom? To whom? A people that had no strength or no lineage. Listen to what Yah has done for us. He said, to whom? With I give leaders. Avraham. We need that kind of ruach. Those that are the father of the nations of Yah's people. That their voices speak unto the nation of Yisra'ya in every nation. He says, I've given unto them leaders, the czar, the ruler, Avraham. He says, I've given unto them Yitzhak, he that lies. That even in the midst of all of the calamity and derision, they shall mock even their adversary. Because they're more than conquerors. Given unto them leaders of such Yaakov. Even though it seems as though that they are supplanted, I shall reconstitute my people and bring them into the Dabar, the promises, the land that I promised them. He said, I gave unto them Hoshiach, the one that brings the Yoshach or the salvation of Yah. That is the power of the messengers or the leaders of Almighty Yah. He says, not only Hoshia, but I give unto them Amas, the one that bears the burden of Yisra'ya. That's Yoshua. And we are the burden bearers of Almighty Yah. We are the burden bearers of his name, of his Torah, his Imat. He is speaking unto a people that have come from the east, that have come from afar, his elect, his people. He says, I give unto them Mik Micaiah or Micaiah, who is like Yah? The messengers declare out of the mouth of the Nabi, who is like Yah? Who is like him? Where is the Micaiah? Who is like Yah? Who speaks like Yah? Not only Micaiah, but I give unto them Yoel. For Yah is the mighty one. For the message of their voice shall declare that Yah is the mighty one. And not only them, but I give unto them Obadiah, the Ebed or the servant of the Most High. We must serve Yah. And as serving Yah, it is one thing that a servant, Yahshua says, a servant knows not. I call you friend, but you serve him because he is so wonderful. 
Even us been here as we listen to that. Uh, when somebody says, uh, oh my master, let my daughter go free. But let me remain as your servant. Right well, uh, somebody sure, come on. I want you to remain in that capacity. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. And yet he was his friend. I want to serve him. Yeah. I want to be the servant of Yah. I want to be the servant of Yah. I want to serve the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. Hallelujah. He says, and I give unto you, Yonach, that we have the spirit of a dove. Hallelujah. Sweet Kodesh Ruach. Sweet heavenly dove. Stay with me forever. Filling me with Yah's great love. And all the blessings of all these leaders that flowed from heaven. That's where it comes from, Hashem, I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, not only Yodaka, he says, but also Nehum, Nathan, the one that comforts us in the Torah of Yah, that shows us the beauty of his mercies and the severity of his judgment, Yisraya. Not only Nahum, but Habaka, the one that embraces Torah, that we embrace Torah, we embrace Yah, we embrace the power of the testimony of Joshua. Zephaniah, now Yahweh has treasured. He is the one that has made us his treasure. Hallelujah. He's given us leaders like that. They declare the voice of the Nabi, the prophet. And what they declare unto Yisra'ya. He said not only that, but I give you a leader like Haggaiah. The one that is festive. The one that uh, when he speaks, he will not give in to the oration of the crowd to do it any other way, but he will be festy and feisty. He will speak the way Yah commands him. He also says, I give you leaders like Zachariah. The Zachariah, his name implies that Yah remembers that they will teach us as Yah teaches us today. That Yah remembers us even though we are a small little remnant. He remembers us, that Yah remembers us. And above all, he says, I'm going to send Melechiah, Melechiah, who is called the messenger of Yah. And that is what Melechiah is, the messenger. He said, I will send the messenger. He said, I will send Elijah before the coming of the great and dreadful day. He shall send the spirit of the messengers of Yah, the Melechiah, the men that will declare the message of Yah's Torah. That is what they will do. Hallelujah. I'm not going to finish today, but I'm going to finish this next week. I'm going to get back to the two messengers, Yisrael. I will. You hear Zohin Mechala, you always tell us that I'll get back to this uh, at a later time. Because he's pressed, because he wants to preach this, he wants to teach this. Believe me, I understand. I want to read this from, from the book of Gilyana. I'll tell you what this is. Hallelujah. Gilyana. The messenger, he that is the messenger of Yah. It says here in the book of Melechiah, I mean, I'm sorry, in the book of Gilead now, chapter 14, this must be the message that should be declared unto us as a nation. And verse 6, Yochahan said, And I saw a melach, a messenger. And that's what the word melach is. Melach. M-E-L-E-C-H. I know it may sound like melech, but it's melech. A messenger, and I saw another Melech flying in the midst of Hashemah. Hear this. Having the Olam via Bizurach, the everlasting message. It will say in most translations, the everlasting gospel. This is the everlasting or the Olam via, the everlasting message. This is what it is. To preach or to declare. Unto them that dwell upon the earth. And to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. This is the message here in verse 7. Say with a loud voice, Yare, fear ye, and give honor to him. For the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him, Shahahim. 
that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of the water. That is the president of the message of the everlasting message. Yes, We must yariya. We must fear him. We can see through the text, through Ezra and his writing, that we are a nation of people that we reject, yeah, we rebel, we resist him. We must be more than a conqueror. Again, Sha'u says we are more. And all these things, we are superior in our ability. We are more than a hazakh. We have strength. We're strong. We're mighty. Our conscience. We must examine ourselves, Yisra'ya. We are people that should be firm. The Torah should firm us up. We should be resolute. We should have the resolution of Yah in our bosom. Because if not, then we're not more than a conqueror. So we can see the dilemma that we have uh, fallen into and what has caused us. Uh, we're in a position whereby we have been given unto a nation of people that don't even uh, know Yah. Tell me that those that are, are the leaders and those that uh, impart things into our minds or, and they sell product by, you think they know Yah? And yet they rule our everyday activity. They rule everything about us. They don't even know Yah. Because the enemy has one battle that he thinks he must win. But he's not going to win. That's going to be just a remnant. He has already has sown up the masses of the nations and people of the world. That's why this everlasting Torah must be taught to all nations and all kindreds and all people. Their ears must be here for one reason. Uh, that the mishpat tem of the judgments or the judgment, the mishpat of Yah is come. And that judgment is the true revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach. We're going to see him as he truly is when he comes. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to see him, Yisrael. The dialogue continues. In Ezra. Yah said, I will give you leaders of this nation, of this spirit, and this nature. And I proceed to the next chapter of the same book of Ezra. Again, it said, this says Yah. This is what Yah spoke. I brought this people out of a Buddha, a bondage. He said, and I gave them my mitzvah. By my man's servant and the nobi, whom they will not listen to, but they despise my counsel. I want to tell you, Yisra'ah, Yah, Yah has always given us the revelation of his mitzvah, of his wisdom by his man's servant. And Yah says, this is a generation of whore listens to no one. We have been taught like a dirty whore. We have the mind of the whore. So we don't listen to no one. Nobody tells me. You hear the children like that. In my day, you would never say that. Nobody tells me. If there, there was an adult, they told us. If I was eight and he was 15, he told me. And if I did not obey, he would go upside my head. So you never heard that from out of our juvenile uh, 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 juvenile ways uh, or a juvenile speech. We were juvenile, but you never heard that. When they say, get off the basketball court, you got off. In many cases, uh, when I was a young lad uh, and we would play basketball, the older boys, they would not tell us to get off the court. This is what they would say. We're going to play, play 21. And if you don't score over eight points, you go down. That's the way it was. And so in order for you to score eight, you had to have a jump shot. You had to be tough to the bone because they wanted you off. They did not make you get off. They wanted you off. And they will let you play. But you knew who was going to win. They were going to win. They get the ball. They would drive. They would live. They would shoot. And then when they didn't get it, they come on, everybody, you down here. And they up here, they're going to rebound. And when you got a ball, you had to savor it. And you had to put it in. And they hated that when you could hit. You go way out there. They, they, they figured he's not going to hit. And you rain it down. Boom. And back then, you go to the free throw line. We played 21, and you free. And I was always an excellent free throw shooter. And you would get the ball, and you would shoot. <laughs> Woo, you're nervous, but you would shoot. 
You, go, you don't get eight, you're going down. They, 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 they cry now because they want to get you off the court. But boy, once I get on the free throw line, I can hit five or six in a row. Come on. Boom. Just get that. Give me that ball. I just nervous, man, but I'm going to hit that. So at least you will stay up one more round. But the next round, then they play defense on you. Oh, you stayed up that round, but the next round, they play defense on you. Get him off. And then it would not be run, one running out there. It would be two of them. Let's get him there. You had to run out there and just throw the ball up, whether it hit or not. But you had something to boast, and at least I stayed up one round. I stayed up two rounds. They wanted you off the court. You must get off the court. You can't play. We want you off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must, Yisraya, with that kind of tenacity, we must be driven to drive in the Torah, the ways of Yah, to the testimony of Yahshua Hamashiach. Again, I want to read this in Ezra. He said, this says, Yah, I brought this people out of bondage, Abu Dhan, and I gave them my mitzvah by the manservant and the nobi, whom they would not listen to, but they despised their counsel. We've been taught, nobody tells me, I don't need nobody. They will tell you today, you don't listen to nobody. You better learn for yourself. Yah did not tell Yisrael Yah to learn for, his, for themselves. He gave the mandate of the Torah unto one people. Unto a nation within the nation of Yisraya that was Yisraya, he gave that unto the Levi. And they were the ones to interpret, to bring forth, to bring wisdom and revelation of the Torah. He did not give that unto the tribe of Gad. He did not give that unto the tribe of Ruban. He gave that unto the tribe of Levi. And they were the caretakers of the Torah. And we see the rising of the Pharisaic mindset. The Pharisee says, you take too much. We are going to do this by a, an intellectual dynamics uh, to, to grasp the totality. And so we began to write and we began to impart uh, certain things, certain ordinance of the Torah. And began to make it a heavy yoke uh, upon Israel. But he gave it unto one people. He gave it unto one man. Unto one man, Levi. Unto his zira, his seed. And today we say, nobody tell me. We don't trust no man. This is a damn foolish concept. Do I trust Ezra? What do you say? I trust Ezra. I trust the, the, the abundance of truth in his bosom. I trust Shaul. I trust Yahshua was a man with luck, passion, luck unto us. I trust Moshe. I trust Obadiah. Yah says, I will give you leaders like this, like the Zephaniah, the Abraham, the Jacob. Although he was a supplanter, he was money. Damn this wicked world. Trust no man. And they will let a doctor lay them open. Put them to sleep. You're not putting me to sleep. You put me to sleep, you knock me out with your fist. But the stick of needle in me, you're not putting me to sleep that way. I ain't going that way. I have no control over that. Now, if you just knock me out with your fist, you, you get the ups on me. But if I see it coming, I, I'm going to do all I can to maneuver from that one. Come on. You're not putting me out with no pills. And yet they tell you, trust no man. And you go to Mr. Bossman and say, yes, sir. Mr. Mr. Johnny Smith, may I have, uh, I need a few days off. I want to be with my, my daughters. Well, let me look at the calendar. Yah said, come out. He wanted his people to live as a nation in nations that we will show the people the beauty of our nationhood as a people and our riches collectively. That's right. That's what Yah wants for his people. Let me find a spot. I'm going to close, but there's much to this. I, I'm going to show you how. I know that I haven't brought that in light, but I have to touch on these things in order to understand who has mercy and how we become victorious what he has done for us, what he is doing, that we can appreciate that. Because if we don't appreciate that, it's almost like uh, uh, one playing football and you don't understand you're driving those, that 68 yards for the touchdown. And it takes more than just a ball player when you're behind by three points, four points. You got to draw from something you didn't know you had. A ball player with, with eight seconds to go, you're down by two, give me the basketball. That's just not a ball player. The one that doesn't want the ball, just have to get out of the way. Give me the ball. So y'all must give us the truth. We would get, put it in my hand, y'all. Yeah. We must be like a Obadiah, Melchiah. We must be like a Hoshia. We must be like a Abraham. We must be like a Yushach. 
We must be like that, Yisrael. Yeah, put the ball in my hand, yeah. Put the Torah in my bosom. Put the truth in me, yeah. Put the testimony in me. Put the witness in me, yeah. We must have it in us, Yisrael, yeah. And the only way we're going to get that out, we got to get the darkness out first. We're not going to get there. That we must be nurtured in a certain way in order to become uh, more than a conqueror. These whole houses, oh, we're more than a conqueror through Yahshua HaMashiach. Quote, we're more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Unquote. Because they have a damn house. Because they're out making a few dollars. They think that they're more than a conqueror. That's not a conqueror. That is not what we need to be more than a hazak. We must be strong, strength. We must be fortified. We must have the power, Yisraeli. Because there's a great battle. It is, it is raging. It is raging. Have you all not read in the newspaper this week that this meteorite is going to pass between the earth and the moon? One of the largest that will come closest to the earth than any in known history has ever come. See, everybody got their mind on that. When you're sure, when the coming of the king comes, it's going to be like a thief in the night. Now, this is not, this is not going to affect us here. When he comes, he's going to affect everything. And nobody's going to know. He's not going to have the wicked ready for that. I'm going to my shelter. Now, you can go to your shelter and you can go to the dens of, of, of the jackals. You're going to be found. Hallelujah. Again, Ezra, he says, uh, And this say, I brought this people out of bondage, uh, Abu Da, and gave them my misfire and my manservant, uh, the prophets, the Nobi, and they will not listen to them, and they despise uh, the council. And because we have done that, we have despised your truth. I want to read this. There's a consequence, or the consequences of that. Yah says, Because you have disguised, despised that, Yah says, Let them be scattered. Or puts, puts, dispersed. Let them be scattered abroad. Where, yeah? Among the heathen nation or the Galim, the nations that are not of the zira of the seed of Abraham, we have been scattered. Yisraya is scattered to the four corners of the earth. Let them be scattered. Why are we scattered? Because uh, we have not taken heed to his messengers. Uh, his servant, the Nobi, those that declare unto us the mitzvah, the commandments of Yah, that's why the enemy does what he does with us in the midst of the fellowship. And we become like scatterbrains. We don't know a damn thing, do we? It's almost like a man saying that she is nothing but a scatterbrain. She is a silly heifer. That in my days, it was more directed towards a woman. She's a scatterbrain. She doesn't know anything. Yah said, let them be scattered abroad among the heathen nations. Uh, he said, let the name be blotted out. There will be called a byword, a password. There will be no identity to the identity. There will be no clarity as to who the people are. So we got white day. We got black day. We got brown people. We got yellow people. That's a damn lie. You have no black people. You have no white people. So these are bywords uh, and words that are used today to categorize people, to give some uh, a superiority, some uh, to think little. But there is no color like that before Yah. He said they're going to be scattered abroad among the heathens. Because we rejected the mitzvah of Yah. We hated the mitzvah, the Torah. We have hated the commands of Yah. We rejected his prophets. We rejected the messengers of Yah. Hallelujah. Our minds are scattered when we reject the man of Yah. He said, among the heathen nations, let their name be blotted out of the earth, for they have despised my covenant. We haven't despised the covenant of Yah, I know, but we have. We despise Yahshua. That is the sure sign of his covenant with his people. He sealed it by the dam, by the blood of Yahshua. And we think that we're going to come into the presence of the powers of hell without the signed contract of the mitzvah of Yah in our heart written by the dam of Yahshua. We are damn fools that we think we are. He has commanded his leaders. He has not commanded you. He's commanded the messengers. And I want to close here, all right? When I finish it. I got six pages, pages of scripture. And I wanted to just read, but I just can't read. I got to explain everything as I go along, all right? Hallelujah. I want to close you from the book of Ezra. It says in the book of Ezra, as Yah commands the Nobi, this says Yah to Ezra. He says, tell my people. In all of our wickedness, he says, my people, shows his possession. He says, tell my people. 
He did not say the world. He said, tell my people. Tell Yisra'ya. I will give them, I will give to you, Yisra'ya, the kingdom of Yerushalayim, the city where my shalom is dispensed, where my heart, my name dwell. He said, tell my people. Is he not going to give us the kingdom? Yahshua is coming to fight for the kingdom of Yah. The Melkut. We're going to dwell upon this earth. And there shall we be with Yah forever on this earth. We're going to dwell here. He says, I shall give them the kingdom of Yerushalayim, which I would have given unto Yisrael. My desire was to give it unto them. We are scattered abroad. Tell Yisrael, my people, I would have given it unto Yisrael. I will give them my kingdom. He said, moreover, I will take back to myself their splendor. I will make them beautiful. I will make their splendor be a reflection of who I am. I will give to these others the everlasting tabernacle, which I prepared for Yisrael. This is what he wants to do. But yet because of our rebelliousness, he's going to graph even those that are not seen by the natural eye. We don't think that they're Yisrael, but they are. He has grafted Go to the kingdoms. That's why this message must be preached. And those don't even look like Yisrael. Those don't even act like Yisrael. Those don't even have the same kind of uh, uh, beauty of Yisrael. Yah says, I'm going to give it to a people, this everlasting place of dwelling, uh, which was prepared for Yisrael. And he says this in verse 12 of that chapter. They shall have the tree of life for an ornament of sweet reach, the sweet fragrance of aroma. They shall neither labor and they won't be weary. This is the hand of your office people. But because of our rebellion, they won't be weary. He says, go you and you shall receive. Pray that your days may be few and that they may be shortened. The time of the Zah, that it may be a few days. And the time, if Yah shortens not the days of the Zah, then the very elect of Yah shall not even be redeemed. Unless Yah shortens the days, the very elect will be deceived, they will be destroyed. Then they be shortened. And he says to us, the kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch. Watch. I'm going to stop there for today, but I'm going to finish up. One, two, three. I can finish next year, but I promise you this one now. Because I want to bring you to the resolution. How do we as a nation become more than a conqueror? He has prepared a kingdom for us. So watch for the kingdom. Look up, Yisraya, for your redemption. Draw at night. That's why we should always, uh, you should always look up. Look up to the heavens and see the hand of Yah and the beauty of his creation. All right. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all in Yahshua's mighty name. May he strengthen you all. Yes, as we rejoice in this Shabbat. Let us stand to our feet. We'll start by singing our song next week. All right. Hallelujah. We turn toward Yahushalayim. Omari Yah, in Yahshua's name, we barach you this day. Our friends and our enemies that have joined us, we barach you in Yahshua's name. We Pray for Yisrael, you strengthen them. As you raise up Pharaoh, you raise up our enemies and those that lie against your servant, your people. We appreciate that, Yah, that you have, you have raised us up and granted us that privilege that we can stand for your truth. Bless your people scattered throughout every nation. Wherever they are, those that join us, strengthen them, our friends. We pray for them. You heal and touch our Ach Lester and all of those that have joined us, our precious Ach Thomas there, and his grandson, Yah, touch that little heart, and you can settle all things in Yahshua's name, and his grandchildren, as he gather and listen, and with us today, and all those, our uh, Achotz, Mariana, strengthen her, Yah, and give us strength and resolve in her bosom. Our precious friend, and our Ach, that we, Nesha, there in Scotland, we, you appreciate him, Yah, that you brach, him that is computer we hope that he was able to join us online today and those that listen in the islands of the sea and those that join us just a few yeah but we appreciate those that have joined us bless all your people 
has gathered here the few and and those that desire to delight in your Torah. We ask it in your sure's name and we trust you for all things. Heal us, Yah, for we need healing. And we need that above all things. For these blessings we ask in the abundance of the most powerful name given unto us, whereby we must be saved. And that's the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. We barak you with all that's in us. With our hearts we cry, Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.